dealing with numeric uh, numeric functions like uh, sum taking the sum of uh, the area taking the sum of the values in perimeter and all when you take if uh, you omit this it becomes very problematic because this is a character you can't add a character and an input and any and a number integer input so you should be very careful uh, while dealing with uh, data frames and uh, <coughs> reading tables okay so these are the things that i want to share in uh, basic r now we'll uh, move on to descriptive data analysis so having uh, gained an insight into the basics of uh, Uh, basic data types of are like vectors lists data frames and metrics you know uh, factors and all we can move on to descriptive data analysis so as i mentioned before uh, before getting into or jumping into data analytics part and the machine learning task it's very important to describe the data that is to provide a summary of uh, the statistical features of the data to play with data so for that you can type summary for example you now we have read Uh, read in a table called w so if i type summary of w let's see what happens see when i type summary of w it is showing a lot of uh, measures such as area a lot of measures such as minimum maximum first quartile median mean third quartile so all these things are showing this mean stands for minimum which means uh, for each feature we have the minimum for example for area if you take the area the column area or the feature named area or the column named area the minimum value is 10.59 that is what it means and first quartile is 12.1 what do you mean by quartile measures of central tendency we have studied in school classes mean median mode quartile interquartile range all those things so it means uh, first quartile means the 25th percentile so where in the data set lies the 25th percentile that is the 25% of the data are lying with the or lying in the interval 0 to that value that is the meaning of first quartile and uh, second quartile is the mean itself which means that the 50th percentile or mean means that uh, the 50% of the data observations are lying between 0 and that particular value third quartile is 75th percentile and similarly max so all these kinds of things uh, are uh, measures of central tendency so it is being displayed for all uh, what do you call uh, all the columns or all the features all these things uh, there are qualitative as well as quantitative measures of uh, statistics in r so you can um, type question mark to uh, discuss or, or help uh, get to know of the functions you can type uh, question mark cov co question mark co to see uh, the help on covariance question mark core cor to show a correlation help so all these things you can try out there are several measures i'm not going to detail of each of these but anyway you can try out uh, measures of central tendency and all Some elementary statistics like uh, quartile, interquartile range, all those things you can try out. <clears throat> Similarly, missing values. In R, missing values are represented by NA. NA stands for not applicable. So you can impute missing values in several ways. One commonly used way is to replace all NAs by zeros. But uh, in in case it is a non-numeric value, then you can substitute uh, by uh, say null, null, or uh, the empty string. some some people uh, often uh, substitute uh, na values by the mean mean value of that column so you can decide that depends on the business logic whatever uh, important logic you are doing it's up to you to decide uh, which logic uh, to replace uh, nas but anyway na represents missing values that's important thing so before getting on to uh, the machine learning and logic you have to uh, clean the data or pre process the data and uh, check that there are no missing values if at all uh, the missing values are there you can impute missing values by any of these ways now comes the visualization part so as i mentioned before um, visual representation uh, uh, representations provide a very convenient way of getting to know the data better for example if you have three dimensional data representations like the cube data cube then you have uh, the uh, what do you call box plots then you have the three dimensional plots uh, then interactive plots all those things are visual data representations uh, which enable human pattern recognition so basically in r uh, r was originally not that uh, strong in visualization but then uh, during the later versions uh, a very strong plotting system was introduced in r so basically it had only base plotting system and then later uh, lattice and the ggplot2 a package called ggplot2 was introduced and now 
have very powerful plotting systems in R. So the base is the original plotting system. Advanced one is lattice, and uh, latest one is ggplot. <coughs> it stands for grammar for graphics. GG stands for grammar for graphics. Uh, we will get to know it better. So first, I will move on to base. Base plotting system uh, is the basic one. As the name indicates, it is an empty canvas. We start with an empty canvas. Just like an artist uh, draw in a canvas, he, uh, he, uh, he draws pictures layer by layer, isn't it? He draws the basic layer, the background layer. Then he puts pictures on top of that. On top of that, he'll draw some other things. So he'll, he'll start adding objects one by one as if uh, we are doing a layered Photoshop object. So similarly, base plotting system also uses the command plot to plot points and other objects one by one uh, on top of each other. It's a convenient way of analyzing data. But the drawback is that uh, you can't go back. So you need to have uh, a very good plan in advance, because otherwise, uh, if you are without any plan, or if you do not have a proper plan, then uh, things may go uh, difficult. Because you can't redo. Once you have drawn, you have drawn the background. You cannot redraw the background, right? Because you already plotted on top of the background. That's the problem. So these are some of the commands uh, in plot. So I will show some of you, some of them. So the basic thing is uh, that I will create a vector. I'll create a vector first. Now P is a vector. One, five, seven, four, two, nine, ten. It's a vector of numbers. P is a vector of numbers. And simply plot P. I'm simply issuing the command plot P. See? It is showing a plot uh, of, uh, it's showing a, what do you call, a 2D plot. This is a 2D plot of the numbers uh, in the vector uh, P. Uh, here, uh, we, we are, we, what the plot we are seeing is a simple 2D plot of uh, the vector P, which I have created. <clears throat> but as you can see, this vector, uh, this plot is a simple 2D plot, <clears throat> and it lacks uh, aesthetics. So if you want to add aesthetic appeal, then uh, as I mentioned before, like an artist uh, builds on top of the layers, I have to build commands on top of this. For example, I will write, uh, I, I, I'll type like this, plot P, so I will add two more arguments, color equal to red, COL stands for color. You, can, you could also write COL or color. So now I have added two more arguments, type and color. Type equal to L. L means uh, we will also draw a line. See, here there are only points. If I want uh, these points to be connected by line, and then I want the color to be red, then I will type like this. See, now the plot has changed. It's a line plot now. The points have been connected by line also. So, if, But now the points are not being displayed. It's only a single line. You see, but I want the line and the point. Then I will type Type equal to O. O stands for overlay. Overlay means uh, I want to overlay line on top of the points. So I want points, but I want to overlay it on top. I want lines, but I want to overlay it on top of the points. So I will uh, give O. Type equal to O. See, now there are points, but you can also uh, see type equal to O overlay color equal to i will give blue color so it's uh, i think it's better to view see both points and lines are visible so like that you can play with data you can play with the visualization to create a better aesthetic appeal plots and i could also uh, add uh, labels plot labels say for example i will add a plot label like this plot type p equal type equal to overlay color green my first plot then this is point character pcs stands for point character so you can get uh, the different point characters so now uh, here this character maybe it is uh, yeah it's a diamond it's a diamond so you can give different uh, colors see the heading my first plot and the heading color is red it is color dot main simply if you give color it's the color of the plot so if you want to change the color of the title color dot main and this point character pch equal to 18 so 18 may be the code for this uh, diamond so that uh, i don't know by heart so it's difficult to by heart also because there are uh, different uh, characters just like you have ascii values different characters so you can try out one by one it's available in the help so you can type question mark plot you'll get uh, what are the numbers corresponding to these characters so here it's a diamond 
So if you want a circle, then you have a different character code. Maybe it's 12. Then if you give 19, maybe it, it, it will turn out to be a hollow diamond. So like that, you can give different, uh, you can experiment with different characters. So you can also change the axis uh, gap. So it's now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I want it to be 2, 4, 6, 8. It's OK. <coughs> you can give it. So likewise, you can, you can adjust the axis labeling and the axis font, everything you can adjust using the uh, using commands. Uh, the basic thing is that you have to issue commands. You have to have a thorough understanding of the commands uh, that is used in the basic plotting system. But that's a drawback also. So instead, uh, you want to go for a much advanced system that's called the lattice plotting system, which wraps uh, uh, these commands into function calls or primitives. So it's also based on the original base plotting system only, but we don't need to type commands or uh, know all of these things. It will, uh, with a single function call, it will, it will do all those things. For example, uh, I will draw a scatter plot. Scatter plot is XY plot. So this is an XY plot, but for that you have to in include a library called lattice library. So I will include the statement library lattice. So now uh, all these functions are available in the library lattice. I'll include the library lattice. Now I will draw an XY plot, which is a scatter plot of uh, the iris, uh, sepal length, and uh, sepal width. It's a scatter plot of the iris. So is the scatter plot visible? Uh, it's tightly histogram. Uh, that is uh, wrongly typed as histogram, but it is an axis plot. It's a uh, XY plot, or uh, what do you call a scatter plot? It's a scatter plot of the sepal length and the petal width, uh, sorry, sepal width. So as you can see, here the first argument which I have given is a, a, it's an equation. It's, not a, it's not, an, uh, not a command, but it's an equation. See, this is an equation, a formula notation, equation or a formula notation. Uh, this tilde, sepal width, tilde, sepal length. This tilde indicates that it's an equation of uh, independent and dependent. End. So whatever we are giving in the, uh, towards the left side will be uh, the dependent and towards the right side will be independent. So here the sepal length is an independent term or the x-axis term. We are plotting it against sepal width. So we are actually studying by drawing this, we are actually studying how the sepal width varies with respect to sepal length. That's the idea. For example, if you want to compare uh, the marks obtained by a student with the number of hours he is studying, then it's a comparison actually, it's a correlation. What is the correlation between the number of hours of study and marks obtained or the grade obtained? So for uh, getting such kind of analysis, we will first get to know the data, get to view the distribution of data, and then we will move on to classification or prediction or uh, regression or whatever things we want. That's the idea why we are going on to all these plots. This is basically the base plotting system only, but it is uh, wrapping uh, the commands and all uh, with a function call. So simply we are calling histogram, right? We are not uh, putting any uh, and so we are just uh, passing arguments uh, to the label, y label, uh, the main uh, title, x label. x lab means x label. y lab means y label. main means the main title. I put it as iris histogram. So if I put it as uh, exploratory data, data analysis, then it will show like that. Then colors I am uh, showing for different uh, rounds. So all those things I am passing as arguments to the function called xy plot and will automatically create all those plots. I don't need to uh, mention each command individually and draw and issue each command individually. That's the idea of XY plot, or, or that's the idea of lattice plot. There are several uh, functions available in lattice plot. You can, you can type question mark to get a uh, detailed syntax of each of these commands. Histogram I uh, have given here. So uh, several commands are there. Now we have the most interesting and the most modern uh, plotting system that's called a grammar for graphics. It's basically like uh, the context-free grammar. It works uh, by certain rules, or if then is rules, or certain uh, CFG rules, which are called the grammar of graphics, that is developed by Leland Wilkinson, along with uh, Hirka. So it, uh, the basic idea is to add aesthetic attributes, like color, shape, size, etc., to geometric objects. So it has uh, points and lines plotted on a canvas. And on top of the points and lines, these are basic objects, and on top of the basic geometric objects, we can have uh, different aesthetic attributes added, like color, shape, size, etc. And it also allows us to interact with the objects. We can apply transformations like rotation, scaling, uh, 
those kind of transformations, uh, rotation, shear, scaling, all those transformations are um, allowed by ggplot. So uh, to enable ggplot, you have to use the library ggplot2 because it is the version, latest version that is coming over now, ggplot2. So uh, it has, uh, it's aesthetically very appealing or pleasing compared to the previous two plots, that is uh, lattice plot and base plot. Obviously, lattice plot is better than base plot, but uh, ggplot is better than all, all uh, these two. So if you include library ggplot2, now I plot this. You see, it's more interactive plot. Uh, see, this is a line fitting. This is a regression fitting on uh, certain uh, data set called car. Car. So MPG may be some cylinder uh, say, uh, mileage or uh, some per gallon, per gallon, per gallon of petrol or per liter of petrol. What is the miles per liter you are obtaining? Maybe that that is being plotted here. So it is a regression, and see, you see the legend. <clears throat> this legend is very uh, placing it's in the sort in the form of a, what you call a gradient it's a gradient type of legend this is very difficult uh, to get such kind of uh, plots if you use the basic lattice or the plot plotting system so i will show you another example this is also created with uh, see this one this is also created with gg plot it's very interesting so this kind of regressions and effects can be obtained uh, appealing uh, visuals can be obtained uh, using uh, the uh, lattice plotting system. It's very uh, sorry, ggplot plotting system. It's very difficult and time consuming to do it on ggplot, uh, sorry, lattice or the base plotting system. And this is a histogram. All those things uh, we can try in R. So basically, you um, have to experiment with, you uh, have, to, have to play with data. Then only you will get to know the data more. Before jumping on to clustering or uh, classification or some other things, you have to just learn what is happening and just understand what is happening in data. So anyway, for uh, the sake of completeness, I will also give you a flavor of uh, one clustering task, which is k-means. K-means is the most commonly used clustering. So that's why I selected clustering. So I have used the iris data set, which I have used before. Uh, previously, when I uh, showed you data frames, so iris uh, is a, uh, or Clustering uh, using iris uh, is uh, will provide an xy plot or scatter plot using petal width as the dependent attribute and petal length as the independent attribute. So k means, as you know, it uh, is a basic and simple clustering, simplest clustering of all. It accepts as uh, arguments the number of clusters and iterations. So here the senders equal to three means the number of clusters. So I'm, I'm uh, assuming three clusters in iris there are three clusters so i'm putting clusters as three and then i will give the data set which is iris and the maximum number of iterations and basically i'm trying to, or i'm uh, intending to plot an xy plot between petal width and petal length that's why i gave three and four columns three and four iris three and four because uh, these are petal width and petal length i'm plotting those two so if i plot If I plot and I XY plot between petal length and petal width, then I will get a plot like this. This is an XY plot between petal length and petal width. So as you see, uh, the points are uh, inherently forming clusters. Now we'll apply k-means. And I apply k-means with the uh, number of clusters as three. So it, it accepts uh, the first argument as the data itself. Data is iris. And three and four are petal length and petal width. And the number of clusters uh, mentioned under senders, which is three now. And the maximum number of iterations is thousand. So, <coughs> you might, it might be knowing what is k means. The people who are working with uh, data mining, k means uh, automatically groups data into inherent clusters uh, by uh, adjusting the in the first iteration uh, a randomly chosen point will be clustered. The next iteration other points will be adjusted based on the distance, based on some similarity or distance to that first point. And uh, during the next iteration. Um, the third point will be taken like that. Uh, iteration after iteration, the clusters will be uh, getting more compact. Points will be changing the clusters. Uh, and a time comes when uh, situation stabilizes. And the situation stabilizes, and when there are no more changes in, in the cluster assignment, we stop. That's the idea. So that algorithm I'm applied here. So uh, and when I, when I apply k-means, uh, you got uh, like this, and if I want to show the cluster, uh, 
type clusters. You can type iris, iris clusters. See, this is the clustering vector. I got uh, one, 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 three, 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 two, two, two. So what are these are actually labels? It means that there are 150 points. The first point is assigned to cluster label one. Uh, say the 149 the point is assigned to cluster label two. 150 the label is also assigned to cluster label two. So these are actually cluster labels. There are only three labels. And uh, some available statistics it is showing that is the intra cluster sum of squares. So basically, uh, K means is using an intra cluster similarity metric, which is a Euclidean distance by default. So it's measuring the Euclidean distance between the points. So it is showing that error. In fact, it is showing the sum of squares of that error, not that error, sum of squares of that error. And for each cluster, it is showing that uh, within cluster error. This is for cluster number one, this is for cluster number two, and this is for cluster number three. So it's showing the percentage of accuracy and all. So all those things it is showing. Uh, and the confusion matrix, that is how many false positives, how many true positives, all those things also you can see using the table, table command. So all those things are available in the uh, help. You can, uh, in my opinion, you know, you don't need to Google at all because everything is available in the help. This is a confusion matrix. Out of 50 points which are originally Iris Setosa, all 50 are classified as Iris Setosa. And out of uh, 50 points in Iris Virginica, 46 are classified as Virginica. And 4 are wrongly classified as uh, some other thing. That is the idea. So uh, this is the confusion matrix. So you can play uh, all these things uh, by typing question mark uh, K means. So the entire help will be showing. So these are the basic idea I have to share. And uh, last but not the least, I will give you uh, links for all resources uh, in case a person who is very uh, enthusiastic or uh, aspir aspiring to get into the details of R. So I've taken the complete uh, I've taken the complete documentation from R um, Cran Cran project R project which is R project dot Cran hyphen Cran dot R hyphen project dot org which is his last reference. We have the entire list of PDF and books here. And then uh, all those things, writing R extensions, data import, export, all those things I've taken from uh, CRAN. Uh, then R for R base plots uh, documentation, I've taken this link. For Lattice also, I've taken uh, this link. These two are some special uh, links which I'm providing to you. Uh, those are very helpful if you want to uh, get to know in more about uh, plotting systems in R. Then uh, Springer has a very series, uh, a very interesting series of books uh, called Use R. Use R. That's a very nice uh, lecture series. So it's freely available for current purposes. Um, so these are the things that I want to share. And I, I would like to thank uh, all of you for your patient listening and uh, time and uh, very uh, interest, uh, showing your interest in uh, listening to me. And also uh, acknowledge uh, Dr. Rogers Thomas Lee and the coordinators uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to share my views with you. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you.